I used to think that being disciplined was about just doing it. And let me tell you, that mindset was exhausting and honestly just not sustainable. But here's the thing. Discipline is not just about dragging yourself through life and hating it. It's about working with yourself, not against yourself. And it's actually the secret to get from where you are to where you want to be. Today, I'm sharing 12 small habits. Some of them take as little as five minutes and they have not only helped me build self-discipline, but they've also made the whole process sustainable and actually enjoyable. Treat discipline like a muscle. Discipline is not something you either have or you don't. It's something that can be built. And just like a muscle, you need to train it. And you do that through consistently showing up. Start small. If you know you're not currently being disciplined, don't try to just change your entire life in one day. Pick one thing that you can focus on. Let's say you haven't been disciplined with your workouts. Okay, before you plan on going to the gym seven times a week for two hours, stay disciplined with 10 minutes of working out from home five times a week. Try that, build your discipline there, and then you can apply it to gym sessions, to longer workouts, to things you don't really want to do. You need those small wins to build momentum because what creates action is not motivation. It is action. You'll see that discipline creates action. And having taken that action, you trust yourself more, which in turn creates more discipline. It's a positive feedback loop. And you need to start somewhere, but you can start small. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to subscribe and also follow me on my Instagram and my TikTok. I post daily content. And right now I have a 30 day series about making 2025 the best year yet. So you are getting advice and motivation every single day until the new year. Make discipline fun. Who says that discipline needs to be absolutely boring? You can make it fun because you are allowed to enjoy your daily routine. Whenever I'm cleaning my space, I listen to like 2000s music because that's fun to me. It makes me more likely to want to clean my space. Same with going to the gym. I wake up in the morning, I gotta go to the gym. Okay, if I don't feel very inspired, very motivated, I just put on a nice playlist and I get ready. I might still not really want to go to the gym, but it makes it a little bit better. When I'm studying or I'm working, I always make sure I have a clean environment and I have a cozy environment. I romanticize it. I light a candle, I make a coffee. I make some tea. You need to start associating positive experiences with discipline and that's gonna make it more likely for you to show up for yourself. Reframe it. Challenges are experiments. Discipline is not about being an absolute machine and always being perfect. It's about realizing that sometimes you will fail but you can learn from that. The same way when someone is conducting a scientific study, negative results still help them learn something. They look at those negative results and ask themselves, okay, what went wrong? What can we do better next time? That's the same approach you need to have. When I realized that being disciplined was really, really hard for me, I asked myself, how can I make this not be so hard? And I realized I had to work on my beliefs. I had to work on making it more fun. I had to work on my routines. The most important part was not beating myself up and instead seeing how I can improve. And when you treat challenges as experiments, you stop fearing failure because failure teaches you something. We need to make it easy for us to achieve our goals and to work towards our goals. We need to make it easy for us to be disciplined. I always set out my gym clothes the night before I need to go work out. Why? Because in the morning I am honestly too tired to pick out a good gym fit. And I know that a good gym fit makes me feel better. It makes me more likely to enjoy my workout. That's why I make it easy for myself. I pick out my gym stuff. I prepare my breakfast. You can make the right choice and set yourself up for success by just preparing. If you know you need to study, well, go make some tea, clean your desk and throw your phone into the trash. Prepare, make it easy for yourself to actually sit down and do the thing you need to do. And don't fight your energy levels. You know. If you don't know, think about it. You will know. You should know at what time your energy goes down at what time you feel really energetic and you need to optimize the things that you do throughout the day to match those energy levels. I know I'm always in a little bit of a slump after lunchtime, so I'm not gonna do the most difficult and annoying things in that time. I will choose the things that are easier, where I don't need to like fully think about it. And I will do the difficult things in the morning because that's when I have the most energy. This also relates back to the whole making it easier thing. 
Don't fight yourself. You know when you feel more energized. So align your energy levels with the things you need to get done. I feel like this is also where the negative connotation of discipline comes in. People think discipline means like going against your natural state, your body's cues that you're tired. But it is not. It just means thinking ahead and realizing that you don't have to work against yourself. Discipline doesn't mean ignoring all of the signals that your body is sending you. It means working with them. Celebrate yourself, reward yourself, even the small wins. Positive reinforcement keeps you going. It keeps you motivated, it keeps you excited, it makes it easier, it makes it more fun. You know, you see how everything is connected. If you show up for yourself and you do the thing you said you would do, celebrate that. Otherwise, discipline starts to feel like punishment because nothing you ever do will ever be good enough for you. Don't do that. This is probably the easiest and most efficient change you can make. Let's say you're laying on the couch and you know you should go do your workout, but you're tempted to just skip it for no good reason, just because you don't feel like it. Ask yourself, what would future me do? What would this ideal best self do? Would she skip the workout? I don't think so. She would get up and go to the gym. And that's what you should do too. Your current actions are gifts to your future self. You can either make life hard for your future self or you can make it easier. Ask yourself, will future me thank me for doing this? Or will future me be stressed because I put this thing off and as a result made their life harder? And when you frame it like that, self-discipline becomes an act of self-love because that's what it is at its core. There should always be a relation with your why. Why are you doing a certain thing? Why do you have a certain goal? There should always be a deep meaning behind the goals that might be more superficial. Like, yeah, I get it. You want to reach a certain income or a certain amount of followers on social media or a certain job title. But what is the deeper meaning behind that? What is the purpose? Why is that goal actually important to you? Having that why helps you go back to it when you don't feel very motivated. It helps you remember why you should show up. So write down your why and keep it as a daily reminder so you can go back to that when you don't feel like working towards your goal anymore. Because when your actions are tied to something truly meaningful, like meaningful on a deep level, you're more likely to show up. Look at this. It's just so fun. I cannot say that there's a deeper meaning behind this, except for the fact that it is so nice to just cross off days and see how much you've achieved. And sometimes the best way to be disciplined is to not do it alone because when there are two people or more, you're more likely to stick to your promises. If you want to start running, join a run club, go running with a friend because then when you have to wake up at like 7 a.m. in the morning to go on a run and it's cold outside, you're more likely to go. You're also less likely to give up when someone is watching you. Of course, ideally, you shouldn't rely on others in order to be disciplined with yourself and to show up for yourself. But I think this is a good way to start when you are still struggling with discipline, when you're still just on your journey to becoming disciplined. Get some help, find an accountability buddy, do it together, and at some point you will start showing up for yourself. Another myth about being disciplined is that it means being super harsh with yourself. And I, I couldn't disagree more because discipline literally is self-love. It is showing yourself how much you respect yourself every single day. It means working towards your goals even when you're tired, even when you don't feel like it. It honestly cannot get more self-loving than that. So you need to also be compassionate. If you have a goal and you miss it, you don't show up for yourself, you don't do something, you're not disciplined, be self-compassionate and don't beat yourself up. Progress is not linear. Yes, there might be days where you have no motivation and no discipline. That is fine. In those moments, understanding yourself, being empathetic and being self-compassionate helps you get back on track. Because if you start beating yourself up, you're just gonna make it worse. You're gonna make it even less likely that next time you're gonna show up for yourself. And because discipline is self-love, it thrives when you pair it with kindness and compassion and you're being understanding with yourself. And you know, discipline doesn't mean working nonstop. You don't need to work 24 seven. 
you are allowed to take a break. In fact, taking regular breaks makes you more productive and more focused and more likely to stick to everything. When you're studying, you can use the Pomodoro technique where you're working for 25 minutes and taking five minutes off. Or what I like to do more is 50 minutes on, 50, uh, 10 minutes off. That ensures that you work, but you also take breaks. And whenever you have a break, don't just go on your phone but instead do something recharging, like stretch a little bit, go on a walk, grab a snack, grab some water, and also just generally give yourself time to rest. You don't need to work until the second you fall asleep. I used to not take weekends off because I had so many things to do. And now I feel like I have even more things to do, but I use my Sundays to recharge. While that might mean doing some productive things in order to prepare for the week, it also means rotting in bed if that's what I feel like doing. Watching a movie at like 9 a.m. in the morning because that's what I wanna do. And honestly, that makes me more productive. If I give myself a chance to recharge and relax, I start the week on a way better note. Taking care of yourself is part of the process. And now you are ready to show up as the most disciplined version of you. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.